Dr. Cato. Thank you very much, President. During previous rounds of the monetary dialogue, I've raised with you the issue of stranded assets, and we're hearing more and more voices being raised to ask the ECB and other regulators to revise their approach to financial risks and take into account climate risks through macroprudential policy. In addition, you'll recall that I and my colleagues have sent you a written question concerning the role that the ECB has as an, as an EU institution bound by the Paris Agreements and what role you have to fight against climate change in that, in that context. Indeed, Article 2 of the agreement sets out the overall aims, including, quote, holding the increase in the global average temperature to well below 2 degrees C above pre-industrial levels and making finance flows consistent with a pathway towards low greenhouse gas emissions and climate resilient development. So in this context, I'd like to ask whether you will continue to, to purchase assets from corporations that have investments in fossil fuels or are mainly directed towards the, the extraction and sale of fossil fuels. And as we come to the period of tapering, when the bonds reach their maturity, but liquidity will continue to be available should you wish to use it to purchase future corporate assets, can you reassure me that you will not be purchasing the assets of fossil fuel companies? Secondly, does the ECB agree that bonds can gradually be shifted towards investment in green infrastructure? And obviously, I can understand, I can hear your answer in some sense in advance, saying that these are political decisions, and I, I would agree with that. But an economist might refer to these as economic distortions, the kinds of decisions you're making about which corporate assets you buy. But in my view, this, this is now a political role that the ECB is exercising in deciding where, where the liquidity should flow. And in this context, I'd like to ask whether you think there is sufficient political control over the decisions that are being made by the bank and whether the sort of, the sort of discussion we're having here, which is largely about scrutiny, is sufficient or whether there needs to be greater political accountability for the decisions made by the central Central Bank. Thank you. We, uh, let's not forget that the, we have a mandate, and that's price stability. And uh, our monetary policy is geared to that mandate. But without prejudice to its primary objective of price stability, the ECB supports the general economic policies and the aims of the Union. And amongst these, Article 3 of the treaty explicitly includes the sustainable development of Europe, aiming at a high level of protection and improvement of the quality of the environment. Accordingly, the ECB recognizes the challenge posed by climate change and the importance of policies aimed at addressing it. So, we support the ongoing work in various international and European fora, aimed at promoting green finance and understanding whether sustainability risks could be integrated into risk management practices and existing regulatory frameworks. At the same time, it's important that any potential changes to regulatory frameworks or prudential regulation to reflect climate change are justified from a prudential perspective and don't undermine their primary purpose. Thank you. So can I come back on, on the political point? Because I recognize that you have your mandate, and I suppose part of the question I'm trying to ask is whether that mandate is sufficient at a time when decisions being made by the bank about the asset purchase program and other forms of QE are having significant impact on what national governments are able to achieve and indeed the kind of priority of liquidity flows across the continent. In that context, I'm really questioning whether politicians, namely those of us sitting in this room, have sufficient influence over how those decisions are made. What, uh, what we've done when we, uh, when we designed the eligibility criteria for our bond program uh, was to make them broad enough so that we can buy also some of the bonds that, uh, that you are hinting at. And that's what we are doing. And that's what we are, uh, we are uh, supporting, as I just said, uh, the, um, the article of the, of the of the treaty that explicitly mentions the sustainability and the quality of the environment. 
but let's not forget, we, so we, in principle, we are completely uh, in agreement with you, but we have first and foremost our mandate, and that's price stability, and that's what our monetary policy should be designed for. If there are political decisions, that's not our, it doesn't enter into our competence.